Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to my shop. <clears throat> well, today I'm going to start a new series. You know, I do a series on what I call legacy building. It's the things that uh, have to do with my legacy machine. And I have one I call OTB Thinker. And I have a couple others like that. Well, this one I'm going to call Shop Notes Revisited. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's about going through <clears throat> Shop Note magazines. Um, they used to be around. I think they quit somewhere around in 2012. They did their last issue. And quite honestly, I certainly miss them. But I still have all the issues that they have published up to then. <clears throat> and I read through those all the time, read the articles. <clears throat> and what I have found is that I've decided that I'm going to start building a few of those things for the shop. And I'm going to start off my first episode. It's going to be about shop notes issue number 19. And on page four, there is an article in here about a hand plane jointer right here. Where you take a block plane and you make a jointer table for it to set into so that you can hand joint small pieces of wood. Uh, I do a lot of small pieces of wood. I do a lot of small jewelry chests with drawers and that. And so <clears throat> not only do I have to make sure these pieces are nice and straight, but I also have to make sure that they're jointed right at 90 degrees a lot of times. And that's real critical that all my pieces are shaped exactly right. <clears throat> well, those pieces are a little too small to take over and to use them and do that on my six inch jointer. It just, that was, it's kind of scary. So not a good idea. <clears throat> and trying to make it exactly 90 degrees with a hand plane, for me anyway, that can be a challenge. So uh, I ran across this article in that magazine, issue 19, that shows you how to take a block plane and turn it in into a full jointer table. And actually, I, and I built that. So this morning, basically, the two major pieces is a 22 by 9, 8 inch piece of plywood three-quarter inch plywood and this is a block of wood that's two inches by two and a half inches and I took and I screwed this one to that cut it in half and made it wide enough that I can set my block plane in here I cut down the edges on the inside ends of this of these two boards so that my plane sets in here nice and flat and level so that this is a nice jointer table now all the way throughout and it's true all the way across um, in order to get this to work properly and to have it in place I have this board that I added a quarter inch hardboard that sets over on top of the plane so that it makes the blade of the plane under underneath the board so that I'm getting it to shave all the way up to the edge in order to take the plane in and out I just take three of these four screws that hold this piece on here. I just take three of them out and I can lift that up out of my way. Then I can take, loosen this set screw and that's what holds this plane against the backboard so that everything is true, flat and level. In order to make it level this way, what I did was, if you look at my block plane, it's just an ordinary Stanley block plane. I think this is a, a low angle plane, but I'm not really 100% sure. But I took the knob off the front, so I just have the threaded bolt that is here. And I drilled a hole right here for this to slip into to help align this in place. And in order to set the height from the bottom side up to that hole, I put another screw like this one. And I can reach up here with this and screw that screw up and down till it's nice and level on the front edge here so that I'm in alignment with my fence. On the back side, I have this just <clears throat> uh, no adjustment on it, but I don't think it's a real problem. If it does, I can put shims underneath there as needed. But as it stands now, this is actually perfectly flat and level and stays in place. So all I do is I put my fence down. I put my three screws that I took out. I would put them back in here. And then I set the set screw right here against, pushes against the plane. And that's what pushes it up against the backboard to hold this thing 
true and flat. And so now this thing is exactly true and flat. And it's square to my fence. And it's, it's true and flat here. Now I can't run across the blade with this, but you can see that from either direction, I, it is pretty well flat all the way throughout. So this gives me a nice true flat table for planing. So now I can take small boards like this and I can adjust it just ever so slightly from down here without any problem for fine adjustment so that I can then take and shave this down so I end up with a nice square edge on the board. If I want to plane this board, if it's less than an inch and a half wide, then I can actually take the board and use a regular push stick. And I don't know where my other board went. Oh, there it is. And I can take a board, set it here, hold it against the fence, and I can actually plane down, take a little practice yet to do that, but I can actually plane the board down flat, nice and flat like this, once I get this completely adjusted. I've been playing with it this morning, and I had it working really nicely for a while, but then I tinkered with it again, so I've had to be adjusted so that it will do exactly what I want. But it has done it, and so it does work real well once you do the fine adjusting. And now that it's in place and I have it, if I'm using it, I also keep a little toothbrush here. I couldn't find a used one, so I borrowed my my wife's toothbrush this morning so I could do this. I got to run it back in before she needs it again, but don't tell her. So, and then I'll find a used one somewhere later on. But anyway, I'll put this back in a little while. Shh, don't tell her. But I use that to help clean any chips that start to get stuck. And I can get at it from either above or below to clean it out. So I keep that handy ready close. And that's how the whole thing works. It actually works pretty well. If you read the article, you can get a basic idea of how it's made. Now I will tell you, I did change mine a little bit. And they also have a guard that goes on here that I did not make that guard. <clears throat> I wasn't sure whether I would need it or not. And the more I use it, the more I think I probably will end up building and adding that to this. But we'll see. Uh, I also want to make so that instead of being held in by a face vise, I want to put a ledge on the back side here, I think, so I can just set it right on my bench and clamp it down like you would a moxin vise or something. And I want to be able to lock it down on my vise because this is actually probably a little too high for it to be comfortable using it. But I could actually do even a little bit larger board. I can do edge jointing on boards of almost any size if I really wanted to. It, it's a nice size table and it seems to be very accurate at this point. Uh, like I said, I've been using it this morning and it works real well. So I'm real happy with it. From my first article, I think it's gonna, it was a great project. It's going to be a great addition to my shop. I think I'm going to find myself using this a lot. So Shop Notes Magazine. Article, uh, it's the first article in there on Shop Notes issue 19. Uh, if you have that, you might want to look it up. Anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by. Uh, if you like this video, please say so. And most importantly, though, please come back again because there's plenty more where this comes from. We're nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon.